From the unfriendliest city on earth, this is the Shreveport Report for July 23rd, 2016. Shreveport always has been, is, and may always be the unfriendliest city on earth. The culture of crime in Shreveport, or anywhere for that matter, will only desist when criminals find the desire to change. The battle for change rests within the self. Internal changes within the self are marked by the criminal proclaiming, quote, I'm not the same person I was when I committed those crimes, unquote. There is a direct link to the social bias of cognitive ease. Cognitive ease is a human weakness. If someone put a glass of brown bubbly liquid in front of you, you probably wouldn't drink it. But if you see Coca-Cola commercials every five minutes on television, you're going to want to try it. The same thing happens with crime. You're at ease with the people that you can relate to who commit the crimes. They're the same skin color, the same gender, the same age group, they live nearby, so you allow them to do their thing. The skeptic never is at ease. Skeptics test the environment. Cognitive ease allows you to accept it. There are five factors that bring on desistance in crime. Number one, shifting from self-centeredness to consideration for others. Number two, developing pro-social values and behavior. Number three, increasing ease in social interactions. Number four, greater consideration for the community. And the real subjective one, number five, concern for the meaning of life. Early this morning, I was alerted to an unusual noise. I went outside with my camera. I looked around. I didn't see anything, so I went back inside for a minute. And then I reasoned, no, I need to check that out. That was a weird sound. So I went back outside, and I noticed the car across the street appeared to be on fire. So I went inside and called 911. Then I went back outside and pointed my camera at the car and took some video. Here I'll speed it up so you can see the, the vapor coming out of the car right in the middle of the picture. There's a car across the street on fire. Okay. What's your address? 
across the street from you? Yes. Okay. Is anyone inside of that vehicle? I don't think so. Okay. Is it close enough to catch the house on fire? No. All right. We get the fire department route to the location. What's your name? Jay Salzburg. Okay. Jay, what's the contact number for you? Okay. We get help on the way, okay? Yeah. Again, I'll speed it up so it's not so boring, but basically the fire engine came and the uh, firefighter said that uh, the, the car wasn't on fire, it was some kind of coolant mishap, and that there were three people sitting in the car. Yet, I shined light over there and they didn't acknowledge anything. So the, here's that cognitive ease thing. They're just sort of used to me uh, raising a stink in the neighborhood. So they didn't think anything of it and ignored me. And told the uh, firefighter that uh, I call 911 all the time. Now in the past year, I've called twice, including this one. So perception is not reality for them or for me You know, there's a real problem with uh, things like this. It's better to err on the side of caution. You know, when I, I'm spoken down to because I made the call and it wasn't a fire and the neighbors think that I'm harassing them is really sending the message that the neighbors really don't care whether I call or not. So, you know, there could have been a fire. Imagine a fire in your neighborhood and no one calls. You know, I could have ignored this and if it had been a fire, it would have been a really bad situation. But, I called. So sue me. So let's get back to that stuff that I was talking about earlier. You know, that unacceptable stuff.
motorcycle rice rocket with loud pipes that tours the neighborhood every Friday night. This thing is really loud. I can literally hear it miles away. It comes close by, I, I assume it's someone showing off at the riding club on the highway across the way. You know, but that, that still is 500 feet away. I shouldn't be able to hear that in my house. But here we go. And lastly, a booming stereo incursion into my bedroom from 500 feet away at 2 o'clock in the morning. And this is only a small sample of this subsonic incursion I must endure. It's a continuous problem. From the unfriendliest city on Earth, this is the Shreveport Report for July 23rd, 2016. Shreveport always has been, is, and may always be the unfriendliest city on earth.